There we go. Hi. It would not be a live stream if I didn't have at least one microphone input turned off. Hmm. Oh, folks can hear me. There we go. Hi. Oh, hey, I'm hearing myself. That's not good. It would not be a live stream if I didn't have at least one microphone input turned off. Hmm. Oh, folks can hear me. There we go. Hi. Oh, hey, I'm hearing myself. That's not good. It would not be a live stream if... Can hear me. There we go. Hi. Oh, hey, I'm hearing myself. It would not be a live stream. Folks can hear me. I think I found our culprit. Somehow I had a window open in the background on a monitor that's over there. And uh, yeah, it, it was happily continuing to put everything through the desktop audio. It's all technical. <laughs> and, and yes, there always have to be technical difficulties. It would not be one of my streams if we didn't have at least one um, example of technology trying to remind me that uh, I am just a meat suit trying to operate it effectively. Oh boy. I'm seeing a lot of really uh, familiar names here. Hello, Kathy. And uh, and, and incidentally, Steve, or accidentally, Steve, um, Amaris, Teresa, Crystal, hi, Teddy, good to see you, Berioza, hello, Fanny, I haven't had a chance to catch up on all the shenanigans on Instagram, ah, Stacy and Badges are new names, hello, hello, Sandra, Hello, Christina. Okay. So I may need to bump my uh, microphone. And you may see everything wobble a little bit because that, that'll be me getting a little bit closer to the desk here. I have a nice little desk. I have moved back upstairs. Um, there's a story there. Uh, for those who are not part of the Patreon. Um, I have a full-time job again. Pardon me. I, I also have 7-Up, which... But, um, yeah. Uh, finally, the resume decided to do its job, and I found myself being hired by a internet provider who needs technical support, so... That's what I've been doing for the past month and a half, is training, retraining, essentially. Um, learning the technology that is behind um, the new systems I'm working with, and talking to people on a daily basis, and being very, very tired when I get home at night. 
it makes it makes it difficult to get any kind of knitting or spinning or anything done when all you want to do after you get off of work is go see your go see your dad talk to the husbeast and go to bed <laughs> so i've been going to bed pretty early um what's been going on funnily enough and i did have a finished object to show you but i can't find it um when I was going through training, I had, uh, I had joked that by the end of training, I was going to have at least one pair of socks done. <laughs> and I did, I did finish the socks. You can't see them because the husbeast has been wearing them and I think they're in the wash right now. But, um, also I tatted up a collar, a lace collar, and unfortunately I can't find it. I went looking for it today. I thought it was just sitting in that direction uh, on the uh, on the old dresser that um, goes with the goes with this desk, and it's just not there. So I must have taken it downstairs at some point and uh, planned to, you know, iron it out, block it, and just can't find it. So. Ah, once I do, though, I will put up pictures so that everybody can see what it looks like because it is fantastic looking. Do I enjoy my job? Um, I like the company. Uh, I like some of the customers. I find it challenging. I don't know whether anybody really enjoys technical support, be they the customer calling in or the person doing the call. Um, the, the thing is, I've been doing tech support for a long damn time, so <laughs> it's kind of second nature to me. Um, tech support is an experience. Hopefully they're nice humans. Yes, actually, I work with a really nice team of human beings. Uh, I went through a class with four guys and four gals. So there, I think there were eight of us in the class, plus our trainer. So we were pretty evenly split down the middle. Uh, we've lost a couple of people from our little pod since, but, you know, it happens. It happens. Not everybody's going to decide to stick around. Uh, tech support calls can be very stressful. They can be very stressful. I myself have had some, uh, I've had some mental health issues. It's funny because I, I said to the supervisor, uh, my supervisor, you know, I have absolutely no problem getting onto a live stream with all of my crafting people. I have more of a problem talking one on one with somebody who is angry that their internet is down. So, you know, it's all what you get used to. Congratulations, Ray. <laughs> it's it's good when you can find something that will actually kick in once your leave comes up. In my case, I was off work for a good three to four years. I think the first year the Husbeast gave me as almost a gimme. And the next two to three were kind of, could you please, please get a job? And at that point, it was more a matter of... Well, I'm trying. It's whether the resume will do its job. So, huzzah. And we'll see where we go from here. I do still plan to make videos. I do still plan to live stream. It's just going to be on a schedule as permitted by the full-time work that pays for the materials. And speaking of that... It's kind of hard to get out of depression era mentality when you have not had a lot of money coming into the house. And I know that some of the folks watching have probably been through that the past couple of years, what with the whole pandemonium. Um, but I have been able to pick up a few inexpensive things. Uh, I went to Michael's with the Husbeast, because he has... We have known for a while that the Husbeast needs to get a hobby. He has uh, been playing video games 
uh, as long as I've known him, but he hasn't really had a real work with your hands kind of hobby. So a friend of his started getting into Warhammer miniatures. Uh, anybody who has seen my Instagram probably saw a few primed miniatures drying on a piece of cardboard. And those belong to our buddy. I've got something on the on the desk. And so he has got the Husbeast painting and priming miniatures now, and that's what they're out doing today. So uh, I had some problems. I was going to actually stream yesterday, but I had some problems getting the camera working. Yeah. You remember the cam- Some of you may be patrons and or remember from a previous live stream that I was talking about a brand new camera that I picked up with the uh, proceeds from Patreon. And it's a nice little camera, right? It refuses to turn on. And the problem behind that is that it has already been back to Canon once already to be repaired and come back. And it worked, I think I've used it maybe twice and not even for a very long time. And then, oof, errors. So it's going to get packaged back up into its box and sent back to Canon yet again, which, you know, considering that I hadn't gotten rid of the box from the last time it went to Canon, uh, here's hoping that they'll just replace the whole thing outright instead of trying to repair it. So that's, that's one thing. Um, but that's why I wasn't actually able to stream yesterday. But it's, it's okay. Luckily we swiped the Husbeast's webcam from his computer. And hopefully things won't be too blurry on the screen. Uh, let's see, I picked up, I don't know whether you'll be able to see these. These are clasps, so that if I'm making more collars and things, I'll be able to have a closure. And a pretty little bumblebee charm, because we should all be doing what we can to save our bumblebee friends. Let's, let's just say that um, with what's been going on the past couple of years, uh, the Bumbles are not having a good time, and they uh, are in danger of dying out. So, people are being advocated around here, or admonished to let their gardens grow over a little bit so that uh, Mr. and Ms. Bumblebee have the chance to do their job and pollinate things because uh, without pollination we could be sunk hello cat it is good to see you discord has been fun for me this weekend because uh unfortunately while while i have not uh had a lot of new pictures from cat of her constant works in progress because cat really loves to knit really large afghans and they are stupendous they are like works of art um if you head to my i think i've got an aggregate links page somewhere in the description down below on strinkronicity.net if you can get into the discord server which you should be able to um hopefully it won't uh tell you that the link has expired because I tried to make sure that it was a non-expiring link. If you get a chance, check out the... what section is it? Just checking on the other screen here. Check out the fiber arts section because, um, yeah, uh, Kat has a tendency to do all of these fantastic kind of landscapes in yarn and I, I, I'm just boggled. Uh, let's see. So many bumblebees in Austria. <laughs> Not many wild bees anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think that in North America at least there's, I think it's a fungus that's been killing off the bumbles and 
it's unfortunate. Um, personally, I, I am scared to death of anything that has wings and a stinger and makes no buzzing noises. I will, no matter what, I will, you know, promptly lose my, lose my cool and run in the opposite direction. But I'm a big fan of bees, uh, mainly because my grandfather was a beekeeper. And my dad has all these stories of things like uh, being in an old, like, 1940s, maybe a 1930s Ford truck that had bee hoppers in the back uh, as, or bee supers, I think dad called them, uh, because there wasn't a back seat. It's not like the Ford truck of today. There weren't these, you know, awesome seats with uh heating and stuff like that you maybe had front seats like a bench seat or something like that and a blank space behind you and my dad remembers being a kid and what he and his sister would sit on were the bee supers and there would be bees in the truck just you know around the window edges just sort of tracking tracking uh whatever they had on their bodies all on the windows and so people walking by would look in and see oh people and bees uh let's see here yeah bees are something i'd rather love from afar too cat <laughs> uh i i do i do love them i do uh think that they are very important I will also allow them their space to do their thing uh, wasps on the other hand I just I just blindly run away from those they're they're assholes pardon my French uh, let's see explaining that California is now designated bees as fish so they can now be a protected species interesting uh, Berrios and my sister keeps bees. Woo! Many thanks to your sister. Beekeepers are not as common as they used to be. Uh, the house, I, I've probably told this story, but the house I grew up in, uh, in the Ottawa Valley, um, was right next door to a former convent, which originally kept bees. And one year the bees swarmed and went to one of the other houses and found their way in through the wall and and of course either they made made a hive or they made a nest in the house and every year the swarm would there would be a swarm and it would move to another house and one year it moved to our house so my mother walks into my brother's bedroom with with laundry and sees the room is just covered in bees closes the door screams for my father <laughs> who comes up takes one look kind of nods, tucks something underneath the door to make sure nothing can get out from underneath the door. I mean, the house was over 100 years old. It was it was an old Victorian. Goes out to the home hardware, comes back with a spray bomb and just pops it in there. Dead bees. Now, dead bees who are in your house is one thing. For years, we had a hive in the walls and you could go in after dad you know, cleaned everything up and patched everything up. You could go into my brother's room and you could actually hear the bees humming in the walls. And one of the most interesting memories I've got is my father up in an amazingly tall ladder, just in his old Pierre Cardin shirt and a pair of jeans with a baseball cap on his head, one cigarette tucked behind his ear, puffing on another cigarette, as there's bees flying around him and every so often taking a drag off the cigarette and blowing it into the area where the hive was and then taking the spray bomb of whatever it was he had with him and just taking care of the nest from the outside. So hopefully whoever bought the house does not still have a bee problem because dad did a pretty thorough job. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Fanny, did I miss the Discord? I have to hop over later. 
garden is home to all kinds of insects and birds, a hedgehog. Fanny, your garden sounds magical. And from what what pictures I've seen of it on Instagram, I, I think it probably is magical. So if you feel like uh, joining the Discord, please, we would love to have you. Ek I, I don't have it uh, limited only to uh, folks on the Patreon. Folks on the Patreon get special bling. And if I wind up opening up the channel, like the, the channel itself, to YouTube's memberships, they'll get their own bling as well. In other words, they've, they've got special colors and they can access certain areas that other people can't. But um, I, I'm not about to say to folks, you can't come in and and be part of the part of the community because you're all here might as well be uh, grandparents and great-grandparents also had bees it was very common then i think it probably was because honey is one of those commodities that everybody wants i mean it's it's semi free sugar i mean you you do a little bit of labor and you let the bees do their thing my daughter has now taken to calling bees fish and fish bees oh goodness Fish bees. Honey has been found in the Egyptian tombs that is still edible today. Science has tasted, tested it to see what plants were around. I can I can believe that. Uh, there's also butter. I think they call it bog butter or something like that. Uh, the Irish, if I'm not mistaken, used to uh, find cold areas of the soil. And they would, I think, put it into specific containers so that in those cool areas the butter would just stay in because it was um because there was nothing that could get into it no bacteria it would just last so need butter bog butter sister had two hives at the start of the year and got a swarm this spring so hey surprise free third hive awesome Wasps are very useful. They eat mosquitoes, and I absolutely hate mosquitoes. I I hate mosquitoes too, and I do appreciate wasps for that, but I don't like wasps that want to be around me. The only kind of perfumes that actually suit me are the ones that are more sugar-based, because everything else is just really overwhelming. So vanilla works for me, but it also attracts things like wasps. So I wind up not wearing any kind of scent, mainly because of migraines, and I run really quickly away from wasps. Hello, Naomi. I am glad you could be there. Could you smell honey in the house? That would be cool to find out. Ugh. I was wearing cats this morning. Uh, my my mother-in-law has cats, and I think some of the cat hair's gotten up my nose, so I'm sorry if I'm my nose in front of people and there is a paper towel on the desk because uh, pop has a tendency to come out of the straw it's just one of those things so back to the other things that I have picked up in the past little while so on that one sojourn to Michael's I also picked up some more Croy sock yarn this is a colorway I have not seen before. I've seen similar, but I haven't seen this particular one. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. And if you're wondering why I picked up two balls instead of just one, Croy has a tendency to sell their yarn in 50 gram balls for a pair of socks that has at least a seven inch cuff and fits Anywhere from a size 10 to a size 12, 13, 14 foot. You, you kind of need two of these. So, yay, Croy. I, I also picked up a, one of those um, tiered rolling carts that is aggressively yellow, even though I am not a fan of yellow. I needed something that was very aggressively cheerful. All got to do with mental health. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, oh, right. Where is it? Is it here? Or did I put it down elsewhere?
was here a moment ago. I'm really good at losing things, if you haven't noticed. Pardon me. I'm going to find what I'm looking for approximately 10 minutes after the stream ends. Oh no, it is in here. Okay. Paper towel. I picked up. That is uh, mixing palette stuff. Just in case the husbeast needed a place to mix his paints for his um, hobby painting. But also because I went to art college and I actually rather like painting when I get the opportunity. And I haven't had the opportunity for a while. So I figured I would also pick up some paint brushes. I've got some... Neither of these were very expensive. I think this one has... Nat these are natural hair brushes. I don't know whose hair or what's hair, but it is natural hair. And these are, I do believe, um, some sort of man-made brush. Some sort of man-made material in the brush. Um... But I figured that it would be useful to have both squared off and rounded tip. Just in case. And at the time, the last box of gouache. <laughs> the last inexpensive box of gouache. They've since restocked, as I noticed the other day when I was in with the Husbeast, but I figured, you know what, a, a starter kit of gouache does not hurt, and what I'm used to using is uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. There are considerably more colors in here to mix with, so this will be a bit of an adventure. I'm sorry that you'll have to go now, Sandra, but thank you for joining us. And Teddy's sewing room walls are bright Lego yellow. Awesome. <laughs> the hedgehog is happy to be here too, Naomi. Uh, let's see. Bat problem. Bats are not a problem. Uh, we had bats in our attic, actually. We had bees in the walls and bats in our attic. And it was funny because um, we'd be out... We had a uh, extra driveway, like, you know, like you might... Like a parking pad. You might put an RV on it or something. My dad stuck a basketball net up on a really tall log. And so that was what we spent our time doing over the summer is there were a couple of stone slabs that were used as benches. So friends would come over and they would play basketball in the backyard. And I found it hilarious because the ladies would sit there, you know, waiting for their turn with the ball and the guys would it would be twilight the bats would start swooping and the guys would be running around going oh my god my hair of course this was the 1980s and as stranger things has uh underlined to us the guys really did like their hair back then so i got painting stuff uh let's see something that took a little while to come in Oh, actually, first, of course, I had picked up some tatting thread. And this is one of them. I don't know how well it's going to pick up underneath this light. But it's a dark purple. I, this pack came with a couple of dark purples. I also had picked up a light pink. And I have to admit, tatting thread is real fun to play with. I have been enjoying playing with tatting thread. Uh, bats are a problem if you have a Jack Russell Terrier that wants to start a new pandemic. Ouch! Well, 
old black cat called Ozzy caught a bat once we managed to rescue it. That that's that's kind of fitting, isn't it? A cat named Ozzy catching a bat? Little on the nose, I think. How does tatting thread compare to crochet thread? Oh, that's a good question. There's a little bit more of the thread from that collection. Cat may may or may not recognize it. I'm not sure who would. Um oh. Here we go. This is one of the collars that I worked on. In fact, it might have been the one that no, it's not the one I was working on before, but it's one of them. Quite a nice little little piece. It's just a small wee collar. It's needs it needs actually some ribbon to be put through it because it's it's kind of like beading lace. Uh, how does crochet thread and tatting thread differ? There is a actual huge difference between crochet thread and tatting thread. Um, you can't see it on here. It's not really visible. Because it looks just like regular old crochet thread. The difference is that a lot of crochet threads, it's, it's kind of like, um when I'm spinning. Okay. It's like when I'm spinning, you know how I will spin each strand individually and then I'll ply them together. Right. So, um, the, for say a three ply, you would take three strands of single, singly spun strands and you would ply them together. For a lot of crochet thread, it's two ply. So you've got two strands that are spun and then they are spun together. With tatting thread, it is technically what's called a cord or a cable. So if you take three strands, if you take three two ply strands, so each strand is already spun into a two ply yarn okay and then you spin those three strands together that is what is considered a corded or cabled yarn and the difference between crochet thread and tatting thread is that crochet thread is usually something like a two ply yarn yarn or a two ply thread Tatting thread is a corded thread, so it's a lot rounder, it's a lot smoother, uh, it slides a lot better, and it's a lot easier to pick apart. So if you have to pick your knots out, because when you're tatting, that's essentially what you're doing, is you are doing different knotting techniques, it's a lot easier if it's a cord <laughs> than if it is a just regular sort of two-ply thread. I hope that answers the question. Uh, the collar is stunning. Oh, you should see the other collar. I, I wish I could find it. It is it is fantastic. It's It uses two different threads. It uses the... It uses both the pink and the purple in here. And I'm looking forward to having that um, having that blocked so I can actually knit, actually wear it. Tatting thread's also smoother than crochet thread. Exactly. It's it's the nature of it being a cord that causes it to be so much smoother. Would it work well for doing very small piping? I'm not certain. The largest gauge of tatting thread I've seen is a number 10, which is very similar to number 10 uh, crochet thread. So it would have to be excessively, exceptionally small piping. Like, wouldn't be much thicker than the threads you're using on each side to tack it down. But that said, this is something that I ordered in off of eBay 
It was very reasonably priced. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but I think it was less than 20 bucks. And it came in from came in from India, so it took a long time for it to come in. But if I open it up, Five balls of mauve and five balls of off-white or cream. Now it says mercerized crochet, but I did check it out and these are actually corded threads. So they are tad th tadding threads. I need to cough. Okay. Cat wonders if she might like to learn tatting. Tatting is fun once you un once you understand the technique and you start getting to getting to know what you're doing. Uh, you can get started fairly inexpensively. I would probably suggest picking up. I I have a couple of. Do I have the actual? Here they are. I wonder. No. 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 Yes. No. No. Ah, that's familiar. For a moment there, I thought that might be in here, but it's not. So, I picked up. Once upon a time, I picked up one of these padding shuttles. And it's a shuttle that has a bobbin inside it. Yeah. Doop, doop, doop. It's a bobbin that has a shuttle inside it and it has a little sort of crochet hook on one end. Uh, it's an airlet shuttle. Um, by Handy Hands. They do the Lisbeth or Lisbeth um, padding cotton. And one or two of these is a good investment, but they're usually around similar colors. I got one of them for myself and my sister-in-law picked me up a couple for Christmas one year. And this is the other kind that I picked up. You can pick up a about uh, a package of about eight of these, eight or nine of these for about 10 bucks. Of course, it's all through the evil, uh, the evil named after a river company. I found a doily in process, progress kind of bunched up. Uh, part of the reason why I picked up these is I would actually like to do a full-size doily and not use old crochet cotton because the crochet cotton I've got is not easy to work with. Like This was not bad because I think it was using size 20 DMC cordonet, I think it was called. But it's wee tiny tiny stitches and I kind of wanted something a little bit bigger so I figured you know what something like this might look really nice for a collar and the cream might be really good for a doily or even either you know either way <laughs> always looking for new thread sources uh the evil Amazon Empire is is one source. I've gotten some of my some of my Elizabeth thread there. Uh, I have to admit, I was not. I was trying very hard to learn how to tat from from either uh, YouTube sources like uh, I think it's I'm trying to remember her name can't do it. I used to know it. 
I looked it up at one point. Oops. There, there is a uh, person who, a gal who uh, participated in the original cost tube symposium type thing, uh, Cocovid, a couple of years back, and she does tatting. And I tried using her videos. I also tried using uh, extant manuals from the time. Uh, so a couple of the books that you'll find on archive.org and it just didn't click for me. What did click for me and I'll probably put a link to her uh, YouTube down below at some point uh, is I'm trying to remember the name off the top of my head. Oh goodness. Oops. I am not having a good brain day. Let me just look here. Sparrow Spite. The name is Sparrow Spite. And she has a Patreon with different tiers where uh, for one particular tier you can just... Um, I think you have access to the free patterns and, you know, etc. For another tier you have access to all of her lessons. And for another tier, it's every month or so she puts out a brand spanking new pattern. And so if you're part of that tier, you have access to that month's pattern. Uh, you also get a percentage off in her store and she sells kits as well as patterns. So that's another option. I think some of her... Now, granted, she's American. I'm Canadian, so... It may just even out in the exchange rate, but I think it may actually be a little less to purchase from her than it is to purchase from the evil Amazonian Empire. Handy hands and my brain went sideways to Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh, goodness. I haven't watched Rick and Morty for, an eight, for you know, a dog's age, so I couldn't, couldn't tell you anything about that. Um... Everyone needs a new hobby. <laughs> uh, my mom used to tat. I tried multiple times with a shuttle. Haven't gotten it yet. I suspect I'll do better with needle tatting, but I really don't need a new hobby. Oh, goodness. I didn't think I did either, and then I started playing with thread, and I was like, this is actually really fun. I was surprised how much I wanted to tat. Like, I'd come home from... Uh, I'd come home from my dad's uh, not long after mum passed away and I would just sit in the big blue chair downstairs and tat and it sort of relaxed me the way that knitting knitting relaxes me but I just didn't feel like knitting at the time uh, I've got a couple of things that I put on the go at that point in time that need to be finished so that that might be a video in and of itself of what I what I've been doing <laughs> that isn't knitting or sewing sewing yeah that that's a thing where is my uh -huh. i also have this came in the mail this past week and i've been waiting for it for a while and the thing is when i saw somebody had uh, mentioned it I think in one of the Discord channels I'm in, and had said, yay, their stuff had come in, and I saw it and I went, oh, that is gorgeous. And after I got the job, the husband said, well, now you can afford to buy something once in a while, why don't you do so? So I did, and her site had said that she had a couple available, and I was wondering, why is it taking so long to be here? And apparently... Apparently they were made to order. I'd thought they'd just gotten lost in, you know, the the interminable hell that is customs. No, she they were made to order. So you're seeing these for the first time at the same time I'm seeing them for the first time. And I hope there's nothing with a lot of personal information on it in here. 
There is an invoice. If I can see if her... It is from a company on Etsy called The Knotted Vine. A-N-O-T-T-E-D Vine. V-I-N-E. <clears throat> if anybody is interested in picking up one of these themselves. I think I'm going to have to scooch in a little closer, so my apologies if... I have myself a little ottoman underneath the desk for putting my feet up onto. Ooh. They are entirely wrapped up. This is a little copper tatting shuttle. Now, the thing with this is that it doesn't really have an edge that I can really pick stitches through, so I'm going to need to have a crochet hook on hand when I'm using it, but that is fantastic. It has a little octopus on it. And then this is another little tatting shuttle. And it's etched with a phoenix. Let's see if I can get that a little closer up here. They just have a gorgeous patina to them, too. The The octopus is very smooth. It's very obvious that she sealed these in. The phoenix? Not quite so much. You can feel it raised. But those are just absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if I can... Awesome. So those are going to be a nice addition to my collection. Goodness only knows they might, I might uh, make another order because I know at least one person that these would be a great uh, Christmas gift for. Huzzah. And if anybody's been wondering about the thimble up here, this belonged to my great-great-aunt. It was my mom's thimble. So I thought that I'd keep it handy since I brought it up from downstairs. Let's just... We'll keep these out on display. There we go. <laughs> Brass octopus, presumably for when you're tatting at steampunk events, it could happen. I remember correctly the, uh, the way people talk about steampunk is that it's what goths did once they grew up or something like that. <laughs> ah, do I have anything else to show y'all? I don't think so. I think I think that's all the new things that have come in. I could be wrong. But I think that's the new stuff. 
getting a little warm in here. Uh, I'm on the south side of the house, so I had to get a little creative with my curtains back there. I'm sorry to hear that you lost so much of your stuff, Berioza. That, that is unfortunate. Uh, a lot of our stuff has has moved on to other family members, so in my case, uh, when something from the family sort of comes my way, I have a tendency to collect it. As a result, apparently there's going to be a lot more antiques coming into the house in the future, so we're going to have to try and figure out what to do about that. <laughs> Reclectic goods. I've started collecting vintage antique hairpin lace forks. Ooh. Diving into another vintage fiber art. I, I actually picked up some hairpins with the thought of doing hairpin lace and then went, mm, they make better hairpins than they do lace makers. <laughs> but. This is what I plan on playing with for a little bit this afternoon. Y'all want to hang out? It is very sparkly. You can't really see it too much. Or maybe you can. This is a fiber club uh, words are hard. Uh, <laughs> This is from a fiber club back in 2015. Uh, Fat Cat Knits was doing a famous couples um, series, and this one is Sam and Dean. Now, I wasn't really huge into the Supernatural fandom. I've watched a couple of seasons, but not a lot. So there are probably folks in... The viewing audience who know more about these guys than me but it is a very pretty squishy in fact I'll, I'll bring it up here again because I think that the lighting here is a little bit better and I thought that we'd play with this because the colors speak to me a little bit more than the last bump that we did. Uh, I do believe that the yarn from that is sitting downstairs on... Mm, sitting downstairs on the console between the two chairs in the living room. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Sparkly. And it's not just one bump of yarn, so it's... It's five ounces total, so it's two and a half ounces of Sam, and it's two and a half ounces of Dean. And she's used different colors for each. So I'm just going to open this up, and I will read you what she has to say about it. Curiosa never watched the show, managed to miss most of the popular shows, so at least you're not the one who knows the least. Okay, well. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Now, I have seen how multiple people have spun this up. And I think I know how I want to spin it. I'm thinking that I am going to spin them separately and as chain ply so that they will kind of repeat their pattern throughout. I've seen some folks try to do it as a two or a three ply and it just it didn't look right. I think it's to do with a lot of the yellow and a little bit of the mustard that's in there. But I think that as a chain ply where we can keep some of the, the color variation would be nice. So, this one here is Dean, and this one here is Sam. And what Ginny has to say is, 
Sam and Dean Winchester are the demon-fighting brothers from the long-lived and well-loved TV show Supernatural. With ten, season in, with ten seasons in the can, this show has a well-developed mythology, giving me lots of color inspiration. The brothers and their relationship is the focus of the show as they travel around the U.S. in Dean's black 1967 Chevy Impala, trading quips and kicking supernatural butt. I watched seasons six and seven intensively in preparation for creating these colorways, but have been a fan for many years. Dean is a pretty macho, tightly wound guy. He is very action-focused, wanting to resolve situations right away, and usually with as much force as possible. He is a good guy and carries a lot of guilt for all the people and some of the monsters who have been caught up and lost in the battles over the years. I used strong, clear, dominant colors for Dean, focusing on red and black. To add colorway interest and further illustrate the character, I used gray for smoke and spectral beings, white for the very necessary salt, and circle for protection, blast from a shotgun for fighting, and acidic mustard olive to symbolize Dean's locked up tangled feelings. Sam is a bit more in touch with his complexities, especially since being trapped with Lucifer in his cage in hell. I chose purple and teal to indicate the nuanced makeup of his psyche and included yellow representing the sulfur stench of the various dark beings, blue-gray for smoke and shadows, the dull brown-red of dried blood, and white for salt. These colors are dyed on three different fiber blends plus sock yarn, and I am very much looking forward to seeing the different yarns and projects created. See you on Ravelry, Ginny. And so it is an 80-20 superwash merino trilobal nylon sparkle combed top. Hand wash, lay flat to dry. So it's about five ounces, all told. Two and a half of each. And what do people think? Should we spin up a bit of Dean today, or should we start with Sam? I am genuinely interested. Varioza, I like the reds and orangey yellows in the left one. Yeah. I haven't seen all the seasons, but I watched enough to enjoy the fact that every time you start thinking, hey, why don't the cops notice such and such, the next episode addresses that plot hole. That's good. I have a friend who is really big into Supernatural, at least until... I th think about the fifth or sixth season. I can't remember when it apparently jumped the shark, but, but they were really into it. Uh, the bluish teal color. Loved the Impala. Danny, the Impala is iconic. <laughs> My friends met both actors at a con once. They are really nice guys in person. Apparently they are. Um, the aforementioned friend I, I was talking about went to a supernatural themed convention. And apparently it was an experience. Apparently very expensive experience. Sam, Team Dean. Dean, Sam, oh goodness, we're, we're split like right down the middle, I think. Sam. Prefer the colors of Sam. Dean's my fave, but the Sam colors are lovely. What have we got there? Oh. Between the fluff and the cat hair. My goodness. So let's see. Everyone's just sort of split. I think I think I'm going to start with the Dean. So we'll start with the Reds. Petty, as much as I'd love to stay around and be mesmerized by what you'll be doing with the fiber, I have to be up early enough to go into the office in the morning, so I'm heading to my bed. Good night, Teddy. Sleep well. Hope work I hope work does well for you tomorrow. All right. Okay. Best way to undo this. 
from this end. Hurrah. I'm going to move the microphone back a little bit just so that I can get this done. I think I'm going to take a picture.
There we go. All right. They did an episode that was centered on a supernatural con based on books written about them by a prophet. That's cute. Uh, I might cause an argument here, but I am definitely a Buffy fan, not then, rather than a supernatural fan. Watching them pull apart is so satisfying. Yes, yes, it is. And when they pull apart well, just. Um, what I plan on doing is four repeats of the patterns, so that's why I I divided it into four smaller smaller pull aparts uh, forbidden cinnamon buns they do look like forbidden cinnamon buns don't they they're sparkly and uh, black and red and you don't really see it in this lighting but my goodness that red it's like ruby slippers it's one of the reasons why I had to take a picture look at that Oh, you would think of you would think of Carrie Fisher. We we watched Obi Wan Kenobi this week. We're we're kind of caught up, and um, she's been on our minds a lot. We've been considering watching the entire Star Wars series right from the beginning of the prequels. Usually, usually we skip the prequels and just do the original trilogy: of The New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and and uh, Return of the Jedi. But we're actually thinking of doing the entire uh, movie run. Including Rogue One and and uh, Han Solo story. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> well. Something tells me we need to get this forbidden cinnamon bun on the go. Uh, how am I doing this? There we go. <clears throat> There we are. That cords and cables everywhere. That one goes here. And where did my other cable go to? <clears throat> That'll do. Well, it'll do as soon as I've got this cable plugged in. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. I'm going to have to move myself back again. <laughs> All right. There's probably going to be glitter all over the place for the next while. <clears throat> Ooh, 
fluff that out a little bit. Didn't expect that. Just accept my glittery fate. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't have kids, so, you know, it's not like I've got kids' craft projects spreading glitter all over. And to be very honest, you know, Carrie Fisher would want us to have all the glitter as possible. Actually, this is backwards. Honestly, if I can if I can find a uh, fiber dyer who does have a Princess Leia or or Carrie Fisher um, colorway, I sh I should pick that up because yeah. There we go. Promptly dropped everything on the floor. This is probably not a bad thing. Now you'll be able to see more of what my arms are doing. happened there I have no idea how that broke Well, Rather wish that I'd seen that sooner.
the way things are going, we might not, the way things are going, we might not get around to making yarn today. It might just be wheel maintenance. Glitter is the devil's dandruff. Nano eel wheel from this Kickstarter. It's a bit slow for her <laughs> for you to find. Oh, I'm so sorry. How do I like the EEW? Uh, right up until this very moment, very much. I don't know why my uh, my scotching band snapped, but if I can manage to get this uh, stuff loose, hopefully this won't take too long to replace. wonder if Bumblebee Acres has one. I know they have stuff from a bunch of different fandoms. Cool. Sorry, my eyes need to be a little closer. Go. You going to fit in here? You're really tattered. What the heck happened to you? Unplug from power. It's always the first step. The Husbeast wanted to know at one point why I was so attached to this screwdriver. Precisely for reasons like this.
that should do it. Fingers crossed. <clears throat> <laughs> I should turn I should turn my screwdriver into a necklace. Um might might be a difficulty. Uh, Naomi going to bed got work in the morning night all and I hope you have a blessed midsummer. Good night, Naomi. Sweet dreams. I hope work is good to you tomorrow. Okay. Well, I at very least want to get a bit of a start on this today, so let's give this a shot. There we go. I am trying to be really careful with this because, um, it's, it's what they would call, I guess, a, a long staple length, if I'm not careful. All of the twist will run all the way up into this fiber that I'm holding on to, and then we'll have to go backwards again, which is exactly what I did a moment ago, was I just changed the kind of twist we were putting into, into the beginning of it, and then turned it back the other direction. Now, the nice thing with the electric eel wheel is that it spins rather fine, which can also, also be a bit of a pain in the butt when you're wanting to make something that's a little bit larger, but I rather enjoy this, actually. I like to get about as much bang for my buck out of these things, so... So there should be lots and lots of wonderful glittery, glittery sparkle. Have a good night, Berrioza. Please give the kitty cats some, some pats for us over here. I realize it's getting late over in Europe, so I'm sorry about the long wait. We had uh, we had tea with the mother-in-law this morning. Hopefully next time I can make things a little bit earlier in the day or evening for you guys. It's all going to, of course, depend on the work schedule. I have a feeling some of the live streams might be on like a Wednesday afternoon or something, so there's something to think about.
So what is everybody else working on? Have you got any projects of your own on the go right now? Oh, that's pretty. We got here knitting rancul ranunculus. I will have to look that up because the name sounds familiar, but I'm not sure I've actually seen the pattern yet. Currently fitting a bodice block. Oh my. I tried, I tried drafting my own bodice block once. It did not go well, but the instructions were from the 1970s, maybe the early 80s. I did manage to track down a digital copy of the book that Closet Historian uses for her bodice blocks, so I've considered trying to follow along one of her tutorials and see how that goes. Persephone Olympia, crocheting a boater hat from Raffia. Nice. Now, if I recall correctly, Raffia is paper material, is it not? So that's, that's one of those things where hopefully it doesn't fly off your head and get wet because that could be, that could be disastrous. Night, night, Fanny, you have a good sleep. I hope the knitting is going well, and I look forward to seeing what it turns into on, on Instagram. The cat is working on her big geometric thing. I'm mostly mesmerized by the wheel. Yeah, the wheel is rather mesmerizing, isn't it? It just spins around and eventually there's a little pile of color. Making the massive couch blanket and doing the flower mal. Oh, make along with the cocktail hour at the Coop podcast, folks. I'll have to check, check that out. I have never heard of cocktail hour at the Coop, but then I'm, I'm probably about... 10 years behind in my podcast listening every so often i'll i'll listen to a knit more girls episode or you know what have you but the last time i was seriously into podcasts i think lime and violet were still podcasting so that was a long time ago nice and chill to work to and hope you have an awesome stream well thank you Try to make it kind of chill around here. I, I hope that uh, folks are, are enjoying themselves. For me, it's just a chance to sort of get caught up with folks and just do something fun for a little bit. The husband, as I said, is out doing his thing with one of his buddies, so. 
It gives me more to do in an afternoon than just sort of putter around by myself. Bray, I find whether drafting or using a commercial pattern, the amount of fitting is all the same, so I'm using a Butterick fitting block. You can find them secondhand. They used to go up to 34, 34W. That would be cool if I could find them, yeah. That was that was one of the funny things. I think it was I think it was Reddit's craft snark or something. Somebody put up that the uh, the new Vogue collection has has gone live on uh, I think it's somethingdelightful.com. So if you're into Vogue patterns, uh, I take it that their their spring summer collection has finally gone live, and it was like, what do you want to make? And I'm looking at it and I'm going, absolutely nothing because they don't have plus sizes unless you go to McCall's. Or Butterick. Butterick has a few plus sizes, but I find that their plus sizes are kind of frumpy. And uh, McCall's, I haven't had a chance to test any of their patterns yet. There's a couple that I think are kind of cool. But these days... I'm not sure what kind of uh, what kind of style or aesthetic I, I particularly want to play around with. I'm I, I think I'm a little too old for standard cottage core. Um, and a lot of those clothes are either not available in my size or you have to make it yourself. And right now I'm I'm trying to work myself up to the sewing project that should have been started probably about three months ago, if not longer. And uh, when I when I get that video up, you'll you'll find out why it was such a difficult process to get motivated on. Um, but I think I'm leaning more towards, I think it's called Dark Mori or Crowcore. Um, you see it a lot on on Pinterest, where somebody will put up that it's, you know, dark mori or dark boho or something. So lots of skirts, though I don't really wear a lot of skirts. That's one of the problems with me being me. When I get home, I hate to say it, it's, it's into the relaxed, not exactly yoga pants, but the relaxed fit uh, knit pants and a, you know, a comfortable blouse. And I don't particularly want to be frilly and frou-frou. And even at the office, it's jeans and a nice blouse. But I'm still trying to figure out my style because I can't see myself going into the office and spending eight hours in, in multiple skirts and layered tops and so on and so forth. Is maybe if I maybe if the husband and I decide to go out someplace. The whole idea of of having you know about three different skirts plus you know leg warmers and a pair of hiking boots is interesting and then there's sometimes when i wonder if just all of these styles are really just all the same sort of stuff it's just we don't see it because we're so wrapped up in what all the younger kids are doing. <laughs> Seriously, I, I've looked at style since the 1980s and gone, you know, jeans and a t-shirt just, just don't go out of style. And I'm pretty sure it's been the same way since like 1965. It's just the style of the jeans changes every so often. You know, it has, you know, where the pockets are and whether or not it has pleats on the front. Stranger Things has been giving me a kind of weird, uh, timey-wimey dysphoria. Whoops. I lost. I lost my end. It fell. But yeah, no, as I was saying, Stranger Things has been kind of giving me a, all of the, you know, weird, I wouldn't exactly call it nostalgic vibes, just 
Um, because I don't, I don't really recall being. I, I, I can't really say that what I feel for the '80s is necessarily nostalgia, because I spent a lot of the '80s wanting to be anywhere but in the 1980s, because I grew up in a very small town with community radio, and only once in a while could you get anything that played anything different than the most inoffensive music you could ever find on, on radio. Because it had, it had to appeal to not only young people, but also their parents, baby boomers, and local farmers, so farm reports, and, you know, all that sort of thing. It's community radio has just been, in Canada, is, is quite a staple. And, it, and I dropped it again. But, um, it was seriously, uh, news to me when I grew up and I found out that Canadian radio was just, like, in some kind of weird, not even renaissance, but it had just sort of taken off in the 1980s because so many Canadian bands were making it to number one. I just thought that you know, that was just what they were playing on the radio where I grew up. So I, I really didn't think twice about that. So things like Honeymoon Sweet and, and Platinum Blonde and The Spoons, I think I could be wrong. Uh, you know, so, ma so many bands that were Canadian and, and I'm going, oh, yeah, okay. So through the 80s and the 90s, it was a lot of Canadian bands and groups and and artists making making their way and i was like this this kind of sucks can i listen to something from europe for a while you know for me excitement was uh the weekend and uh waiting up until like say 10 or 11 o'clock and one of the stations out of i think gatineau Al quebec would play uh, dance music so if you were really into things like the pet shop boys and maybe duran duran uh you'd get these dance mixes that you know of course they became really popular in the 1990s but in the 1980s you were lucky if you had you know dance mixes of like the pet shop boys come on and i was i was i think that's how i got exposed to like depeche mode and uh stuff like that but um the the one song that i think got played the most on those stations was uh bye bye monk cowboy by mitsu basically the canadian madonna and don't get me wrong it was fun to listen to but man i i also grew up in a place where to get any kind of clothing that wasn't uh, knitwear, and by knitwear I mean like um, like yoga pants kind of thing, genie pants, and t-shirt material. Um, so if, if you had no problem with that, you could go to your local mall or to uh, the Giant Tiger, but for anything else you had to go into the city, into Ottawa, and go to some place like Susie Shear, and I had all by the time I had gotten to about grade eight, so about twelve or thirteen years old, thirteen. I was already almost at my full height. I grew up really fast. I was about five foot eight, and um, already overweight, which, if these days, would not have been a problem. It wouldn't have been a problem because I was under two hundred pounds at that point in time. Um, these days, though, there are so many more options for young people to wear clothes. It's great. Uh, but back then, if you couldn't, you know, fit into the clothes at some place like Susie Shear, man. My mom made a lot of clothes for me. 
And some folks would say, hey, lucky you. And at the time, because <laughs> we had two different styles. Late to the trend, it's been insanely popular on Ravelry for years. It has new to me stitches and constructions. I take it that's the Ranunculus. I'll have to check that out. I absolutely love to tat with a shuttle. My daughter likes to needle tat. Ooh. Kathy, I feel ya. Crystal, my 13-year-old has just been naturally gravitating towards 90s grunge, which has been so fun since I just turned 40. Yeah, 90s grunge was fun. Um, I, I, you know this trend that all of the costumers have been going on of making like a, making a chemise Saint Laurent? Uh, there's a part of me that, uh, my idea, and, and eventually I will get around to it. Now, you, you're getting to hear it first, so if somebody else decides to come out with a video about it in the meantime, you know that they were copying me. <laughs> uh, my thought is, I want to make a chemise a la hole. Uh, the, the whole, um, the whole Courtney Love... I don't even know if I can say the uh, aesthetic on here without getting demonetized. Um, <laughs> wearing baby doll dresses and so on and so forth that look like they came out of a thrift store and stuff like that. Imagine that as a chemise a la reine. That would be fun. The 80s were deadly when it came to girls and food. Yeah, tell me about it. Every single pair of pants was freaking pleated. It was just horrible. You couldn't pull in Shea 106, who are now tragically classic rock. Shea 106, if you were lucky, you could get it. But even then, it was still a little meh. Amazingly enough, I never got to go to a concert in Ottawa when I was living there. Like, I left there when I was about... 18? 17? 18? Somewhere in there? But yes, my chemise a la hole. It'll probably look a lot like a chemise a la reine. Because, of course, the, the picture that I have in my brain is of Courtney Love wearing a white baby doll dress. So it would probably have to still be white, but it would be short. It would have to be short because it has to look like a baby doll dress. And you have to have the, the very dark, smoky, almost gothy eyes and the bright, bright red lips. I think that would look fantastic. So that's my idea for when I finally get off my butt and decide to do my own chemise a la whatever. As I think that uh, who all's done them now? I think Noelle of Costuming Drama has done like I think both she and uh, Willoughby and Rose is it I think they've both done plaid ones but I kind of want to stay away from the plaid because I am my mother's daughter and I learned very quickly that plaid if you're not careful can make you look bigger and uh, their their outfits are lovely but uh, it's not my thing um, I wore enough flannel back in the 90s for, for a while. I'd, I'd prefer to keep my flannel to, to warmth rather than style. Um, but I'm thinking possibly, possibly white and possibly shorter. I'd end up with red lipstick all over the white. Uh... I don't know. I, I wore a lot of red lipstick in the 1990s, so... In fact, it, it was kind of a toss-up as to what was going to come out of the drawer this afternoon. I've got a little drawer that I keep my lipstick tubes in, like the lipstick that's still still usable. And, uh, yeah. 
I've got, uh, I just sort of reached in and was like, oh, okay, today we're wearing Bury Me in Lipstick, part of the Colourpop and Sophia Nygaard collection. Got it. Got it. How are we doing here? It is getting warm in here. It is 3.22 in the afternoon in Calgary, Alberta, and it is very warm. Kathy, I hope your weather is doing okay. I saw some uh, Facebook pictures from high school acquaintances down in the Belleville area who got slammed by a huge storm. And I know that uh, parts of the valley got hit by a tornado a couple of weeks back. So I hope you're doing okay and you're safe. Match made in heroin den heaven. Oh goodness. Yeah, that's one vice I didn't come out of the out of the nineties with, thank goodness. I was a smoker, but at least I wasn't doing anything more uh, more damaging than tobacco and Apparently in our family, that's good enough. Next time I'll have to remember to point the uh, the camera that's a little farther away, a little farther down so you can see my hands better. I thought I was going to be able to do things up here, but I don't think that's going to work. A little awkward. Doing okay, power only flickered for a side benefit of living next door to the hotels. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. We had a nice big thunderstorm last night. Were clove cigarettes a thing in Canada? Yes. Yes, we had cloves. I, I think I've mentioned it before that we had a two... I had to institute a one clove at a time limit in my car because I'm a migraine sufferer and when you've got three goths in a car, they all want to whip out their clove cigarettes at the same time. And it can get to be a bit much. Clove cigarettes was like smoking my mom's spice rack. And the thing is, we were we were talking with my my mother-in-law this morning about stuff like that. And I, I'm gonna be very honest, if there's anybody listening who's even considering taking up the habit, please don't. Please don't. Like one of the things that they're doing out here is they're going to be They've not only been putting warnings on the packaging for a long dang time, but apparently they've changed the packaging so that you can't refuse to see it, which I understand. But most people who are smokers already understand the risks and choose to do it anyways. Because, you know, choice is a thing that we still have. Um, and, and I've been quit for about almost 15 years, if not longer. Uh, but now they're planning on putting the warnings on each cigarette itself. It's just, it's wacky. But the best thing to do is just not to start, period. Um, I was lucky I was able to quit cold turkey. Uh, my father-in-law had a heart attack, so, uh, the husband and I made the, made the decision to quit at that point in time. My dad quit when... My nephew was born. We thought my mom had quit at the same time. Apparently she didn't. Which may have been a contributing factor to her lung cancer. So, aside from having a bunch of... Aside from her having COPD and lung cancer, and me, the husband says that uh, a lot of my scratchy throat is psychosomatic... I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, I have noticed that my breathing is not where I would love it to be. And part of that is from being overweight. 
very overweight. But uh, to add on to that, I have had dental issues like you would not believe. So if smoking is something you're thinking of doing, please don't. Please, please love yourself a little bit more. I know you've got the choice, though. And if it's something you're going to do, you're going to do it. Three goths in a car. <laughs> you have to start a punk band and that needs to be the first sing single. Three goths in a car. It sounds like a Canadian sketch comedy troupe, really. You know, kids in the hall, three goths in a car. Four on the floor. I miss them as well. A nostalgic scent. I was lucky to be a social smoker and not get hooked and quit easily in my 20s. Good for you. Um, It took me longer. Uh, I was in my 30s, but, you know, I'm coming up on 50 now, so it's been a while. Oops. See, Crystal's with me. Sounds like a humor song from Kids in the Hall. Personally, it sounds like a song by Four on the Floor. Or the Frantics, rather. Four on the Floor was their TV show. Uh, but yes, if, if you like the smell of cloves, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, what is it? Not Bloodbath and Beyond. Um, Bath and Body Works probably has a clove scent somewhere. <laughs> Never smoked them, but the smell of cloves bring back great memories of being 15 at Icon, a now defunct fantasy and sci-fi convention that was awesome back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, science fiction and fantasy conventions. Um, when I moved out here to Calgary, there was a convention called, I think, Conversion that was mainly geared towards science fiction and fantasy writing. So basically more being a creator and every so often they'd have a special guest like, say, George Takei or you know, whoever. And apparently it had some problems and did not make it, I don't believe very long into the 2000s and now it's all comic expos and stuff like that but uh, this past weekend was a uh, writers convention down in Minnesota that I kind of wish we could have gone to called 4th Street Fantasy and unfortunately this year just wasn't in the cards we went to it a couple of years ago and if you are a fantasy writer it is an awesome opportunity to not only discuss uh things in traditional published fantasy but also to meet some of the other writers and industry professionals so it's it's a very small convention but definitely a fun one And generally, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, some guy who decided to come in, come to the uh, dance in a duct tape kilt because they don't have a dance. Uh, let's see here. Versatility, maybe make it into a sticker. That might be an idea. Three goths in a car. Stringchronicity, three goths in a car. I never smoked. I can't stop coughing when I'm within five feet of someone smoking. That's a good reason not to start. Uh, I I quit a couple of times. The first time... Uh... Now, bearing in mind, I grew up in an era where people just smoked. I mean, your parents would send you to the store to pick up cigarettes. It, it was just a thing. So it was natural that at least one out of two kids in a household would maybe take up the habit and I was that kid 
My brother has other habits that I won't get into because they're not mine to talk about. But, uh... It was definitely a different time. It was a different era. I mean, even up until the 1990s, you could get cigarettes for like $2.50 a package. Now they're, I think, upwards of $20 here in Canada. Um, and it's a morality tax. They don't want people to smoke, so they just keep popping the price up. Personally, I think they if they're going to pop the price up on smokes, they should probably also pop the, sm the price up on alcohol. Because, you know, people who smoke, yes, there is secondhand smoke, but the majority of people are, you know, killing themselves. With alcohol, you're not just killing yourself. There's also the possibility you're going to get into a car and kill numerous other people. So one's just as bad as the other. I remember when people smoked in theaters. Yep, I also remember uh, being probably about 13 years old and buying a package of cigarettes out of a vending machine because they were just they were just that prevalent. It was a very different time. I'm actually glad that we have things uh, sussed out so that they're controlled. But again, as I said, it's a choice, right? It's a choice. Does a duct tape kilt count as a DIY Brazilian? I don't know. But no, the first time I started smoking again was because a friend was getting back into it. And I get headaches when I'm around secondhand smoke. And I wound up getting back into it. The second time that I quit and then I restarted, uh, we were going to the bar on a regular basis. This would have been in the 90s, late early 2000s. And alcohol does not taste the same unless you're smoking. Nowadays, I don't smoke and I don't do a lot of drinking either. It's just... No need. Syntax as a soda fiend, I should be syntaxed. Uh, yeah, I, I like pop a little too much too. Pop? And macaroons from co-op here in Calgary, because dang, they are tasty. Though I think if they decided to uh, syntax uh, chocolate too much, there, there would be like a huge uprising. We've got quite a bit of uh, stuff on the, on the spool. That's coming along nicely. It's nice being able to have a bird's eye view of what's happening on my on my wheel. Nice. For arguing syntax. Yeah, that, that kind of uh, occurred to me too, Crystal. <laughs> How are we doing here? This is being spun rather fine, so it's taking a while to get through this one quarter of the bump. If I'm using my terminology correct. I think it was about a year ago or so, like a year and a half ago, Mum, Mum, for some reason got it into her head that I needed to do an Ancestry DNA kit. And so I did, and I, I got confirmation that uh, I am related to all the people I'm related to. 
which was a bonus. Turns out that, uh, you know, my parents had absolutely no fertility issues, and so I am not related to half of... Is it Minnesota? There, there was apparently... I, I saw a documentary on, I think it was Netflix or Amazon, that there was a doctor who... Uh, when A fertility doctor who used his own specimens, so to say, and he did it multiple times. And so now there are well over 20 young adults or adults who thankfully are not married to each other but uh, the nifty thing is of course going through all of the different uh going through all of the different ethnicities and stuff that it's attributed to me and it should come as absolutely no shock to anybody i am really white I am Irish, and I am Scottish, and I am English and Northern European, which for a while there it was saying that uh, I might have some Baltics, I think it was, in me, so a little Latvian possibly. They've decided not to include that any longer, and there was apparently some Norwegian, which my mother kind of looked at me and went, I don't understand, why Norwegian? And I, I kind of went, Mom... You remember history. You remember what Vikings like to do with Scottish women and Irish women. Yes, our father. That was the that was the documentary. Yeah, it it was rather horrifying. There's there are some pretty good documentaries out there that make you kind of if you are not actually uh, caught up in the actual documentary, it is hard to look away. And if you are, I hate to say it, a middle-aged white woman, you probably are very entertained by it. Because, unfortunately, we are. It's, it's one of those things, like, serial killer documentaries, woo! Have we seen all the colors yet? I think those are all the colors. And yes, they are very autumn, autumn-esque. But also rather glittery. My goodness. I don't think that the lights are picking it, picking it up for you guys, but from where I'm standing, like everything is just very, very glittery. But yeah, now now Ancestry has this thing where it'll tell you, you know, what percentage of, of which ethnicities come from which parent. And it's like, I hate to say this, my parents aren't related to each other, but their DNA could have been interchangeable. It's just, yeah. Oh. And the interesting thing is they've now added in the ability to take a look at what some of your DNA traits mean about you. So it can tell you whether or not you actually dislike cilantro. Um, what color your eyes are likely to be. And what kind of traits they may have. Whether they've got rings or I think they call them crypts or furrows. Uh, what else? Just all kinds of really cool things. One of these days I may actually have to do a do a video on it because it's actually kind of fascinating. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get my hands on like a 23andMe kit as well. Kind of see what they're see what they're all about.
Cilantro equals soap. Yes. I'm okay with some cilantro, but I'm not, not really big into it. Gotta go eat, but I'll leave this going. Have a great time. Thank you, Angelina. You enjoy your meal. It's coming up on four, so I may I may cut this off in a little bit since we're about halfway through here and I can see this going for a while yet. I may do a little bit more on my own this evening while the husbeast is away. Ooh. No stop runs is a bad side effect of cilantro. So hopefully your meal has none in it tonight. Funnily enough, the one meal that keeps getting mentioned around our family right now is chili. Because uh, I've got some ground beef and a few other things in the freezer that need to be tossed in a crock pot. Um, but apparently also the mother-in-law was talking about making chili and one of her neighbors was talking about making chili and basically absconded with all of her kidney beans. So if we're not careful. We're going to have like communal chili going on for the next week. That... Cook cilantro is good, but fresh, ew. Same with tomatoes. Ketchup and marinara sauce are fine, but leave the slices off my sandwiches. I, I actually quite like fresh tomatoes. Um, my grandfather liked to garden, and I've probably mentioned this before, but um, every so often, of course, when, when we were growing up in the valley, there were plenty of farmers who would sell peaches and cream corn at the side of the road. And it was inevitable that you'd get to a specific time of year and everybody just wanted to have peaches and cream corn alongside their, um, alongside their hamburger or whatever. And so my dad, thinking he was being a smart cookie, basically told my grandparents, oh, no corn for me, thank you. I don't like it unless it's fresh off the cob. My grandfather called his bluff. And he um, devoted part of his home garden, because he had a rather extensive home garden, devoted a full section to growing corn so that my dad could have corn fresh off the the cob or fresh off the uh the stock kind of backfired on dad the rest of us kind of took advantage of it <laughs> got to admit why buy from a from a farmer at the side of the road when you can just go to grandpa's house and grab a couple of ears from the back 40 but uh the the takeaway from this of course is that my grandfather started the trend of men in the family wanting to wanting to be able to uh, grow tomatoes. So for years, dad tried his best to grow tomatoes. I don't think my brother has ever given it a shot because Yellowknife, the Northwest Territories, is, is kind of inhospitable. Texture in food is huge. Some can't do fresh tomatoes because of that, but can do them in sauces. Yeah. There's a there's a very acidic quality in tomatoes. Uh, similar with citrus fruits. Um, some people tolerate nightshades better than others. Some people tolerate citrus better than others. I, I like the... I like the taste of tomatoes. I like the taste of pineapple whereas my other half is just no pineapple period um we're not sure whether he has whether he just doesn't like the taste or whether it's an actual allergy so we just tend to avoid it when it comes to him 
Just means that when it comes to pineapple, I get the pineapple. And he must have liked me because the first time he came to dinner at my parents' place, my mom served a pineapple upside down cake, not knowing that he might have an allergy to pineapples. So that that's a guy worth keeping right there. What are we doing? Oh, we gotta move things again. It is very glittery on that spindle or bobbin. The bobbin is extremely, extremely, extremely glittery. No Hawaiian pizza for us. I I have issues with the thought of Hawaiian pizza. I never, I never got into the whole pineapple on pizza thing. Pineapple eats you while you eat it? Yes, it does. But what a way to go, right? This single is spinning up so fantastically. It is really nice. It's it's hard to. It's it's one of these things you have to kind of get used to while you're while you're spinning it because it's a relatively long. I, I'd guess you'd say staple, but it's also very slippery. Bacon bits on pizza. Oh yeah, that's good. There was a... We're finding that there are all kinds of little sort of hole-in-the-wall pizzerias around here that are actually really good uh, if you just give them a try. Like, there was... is slash was a pizzeria down by... in, in one of the eastern sections of town here in Calgary that we lived not too far away from them for a while and so that was our local pizza place and it started out fantastic and they were bacon bit on top of the pizza type places like you didn't even ask for for bacon there were bacon bits on top of the pizza um but it um It kind of went downhill by the time we moved out of the area. And now that we're in a different part of town, there is actually a really good pizzeria just a little south of us here. So once in a while, we'll order from them so that we don't have to have a chain store pizza kind of thing. But it's definitely a, a once in a while food. It's not a, you know, an all the time food. Of course, if you can't have bacon on your pizza for whatever reason, then I am sorry. Because it is a very excellent delivery system for sauce and cheese and bacon. And now I kind of want pizza for dinner. Nice. Honestly, I don't even know what dinner's supposed to be tonight. We haven't gotten that far in the discussion, and the husbeast is out at the moment, so for all I know. So for all I know, if this was uh, Zootopia, I guess I'd be eating carrots for one tonight.
That is some chill music that's going on in the background. We're doing all right. Some of the color changes on this are just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, looking looking at the bobbin, this is a little less uh, Dean Winchester and just a little bit more Nightmare Before Christmas, isn't it? I think this is going to look pretty fantastic when it's actually. Give it a good chain ply. Keep some of those nice colors together. Oh yeah. It's going to look fun. This is going to look nice. The question is going to be what to do with this yarn after it's made. I guess we'll see what kind of yardage or meterage we get out of it, because for all I know... For all I know, I might be able to get a couple of small shawls out of it, or a, pair, a couple of pairs of mitts. Maybe a hat and a pair of mitts. Maybe a neck warmer. That might be good. A neck warmer, a hat, and a pair of mitts. What weight do I want it to be? I have a feeling it's probably going to come out somewhere between fingering weight and DK, just from the feel of the single. Hat admits a neck warmer sounds awesome. 
Well, it's definitely a possibility. I mean, I have been wanting to do like a little series of from from floof to finished garment, so that may wind up being what we do. Has anybody watched today's YouTube videos from people? Because I haven't, I didn't get home until just before I came on here. So I don't even know who released videos today. Like, was there anything from Addy or from Nicole? That's something I'm probably going to spend my evening watching. Beginning to think that might have to start doing Sunday live streams when I have the opportunity so we can do like the, the costume after show or something. <laughs> Shutting down costume. Just doing our crafts and talking about everything everybody else has done. Oh, we're getting towards the end here. See? End is in sight. <laughs> I could I could use this wheel to hypnotize folks into being my minions. Oh. Uh... I'm just glad that people want to want to watch and, and listen and, you know, just sort of hang out. I haven't seen videos from anyone except Kat's Costumery and Evelyn Wood. Evelyn's pretty cool. I subscribe to her as well as Kat. Evelyn has lots of good practical advice. Let's see, what have I got here? I just decided to refresh one of my windows. Okay, Kathy, you have a good evening. If I don't see you in the meantime, I, I think I'm going to probably finish up this particular uh, evil cinnamon bun and then we'll call it a day. I don't think I've got all that much more to go here. Seamstress Shannon makes an Aura Lynn. Nicole's been streaming on Twitch on Fridays. Fun to watch after two. She said she had a playlist on YouTube to catch up on them. Awesome! Yeah, Twitch has a tendency to disappear your stuff after a while, so... Um, I know the last time I did Final Fantasy on Twitch, I transferred it over to the channel that I set up for that. Um, I haven't put it live yet, though, because I want to see if I can take out the, the sort of be right back pause that's about halfway through it. And at some point when I've got the time, I wouldn't mind continuing on with the Final Fantasy adventure if anybody wants to watch watch me daughter around on a low t low level tune thanks Kathy I'll take care of the folks and they'll take care of me and you do the same okay make sure that uh, Steve's doing okay Don't need either of you to work too hard. 
Okay, so my my stuff, my list of stuff from today is Seamstress Reacts. So that would be Seamstressed. Uh, apparently Makara Tours is going to be doing a premiere 20th, so tomorrow. At 9.15 in the morning while well, I'm going to be at work. Cat's Costumery moved. Shannon makes honey baked tailoring tools and fast fashion fixes. And the Sucky Seamstress Misadventures. I believe that's one of uh, Lady Rebecca Fashion's friends. And she's been doing sort of vlogging, vlogging, ranting. Yes, please, on the Final Fantasy. We'll have to see what kind of time I've got for it then. Very possible that uh, one week I may have enough time to do a little Final Fantasy and another week I might have a little bit of time to do some spinning or knitting or tatting. But I do want to try and do this sort of thing a little bit more regularly. I don't like disappearing off the face of the earth. <laughs> It's not good for you guys. It's not good for me either. And it's nice having a community because that's what we kind of are. A uh, little uh, reminder to folks that yes, uh, Discord. If you want to join the Discord, we do have fun. It's fairly quiet. So, you know, it probably won't take up a lot of... Uh, it probably won't annoy you very much with the amount of messages that people send back and forth. Because that can be one of the things that drives me nuts when I'm in a Discord is uh, everybody talking and alarms go alerts going off every couple of minutes. And then having to mute it and then forgetting that you're part of the Discord. Oh... You can message, it's okay. Most of the time it's just that I've gotten gotten caught up in something real life. How does one join a Discord? Uh, there should be, I believe, let me just take a look. Do I have anything up here? I'm not sure what's in the... There There may be a link in the description down below the video, like below the live stream, that um, says something about the Discord. Uh, if not, there's a link to a social media page on stringchronicity.net where the link should be. Discord is, if you're not... If you're not conversant in what it is it's a rather large chat program that people use a lot of gaming streamers use it for talking with uh, people who follow them playing video games um, you can use it for building communities for things like writers or for just friend groups like we used we have a discord server for our little group of in-person friends here here in our town and every so often we you know send out a little ping to see who's who's doing what and how they're how they're holding up it really helped us get through the whole pandemonium of the past couple of years uh but it allows you it's it's like a big chat board so chat board so you can uh, text back and forth in little forums about uh, mutual topics uh, sometimes if you feel like voice chatting and you've got like a microphone and a pair of headphones so that nobody else has to listen to the conversation in the household um, you can join in on chats we haven't really done an in-person chat because we're a very small discord but it is something I've considered.
but I do tend to check in there every so often just to make sure that people are okay. Every so often I throw pictures up there. Every so often Kat throws pictures up there and you know she just sort of beats my pants off with how wonderful she is with her knitting. I mean, I'm seriously, it is, it is worth the price of admission, which is free. <laughs> to go over and see uh cat's pictures because wow i think i've got glitter near my eye something's making me blink a lot No, nope, I think it's hair. I trimmed my bangs. -y. I trimmed my bangs this morning, so. Really need to post more pictures. It's just hard to be short and get a good picture of the large piece of fabric. Oh goodness. Has the has the new one grown that much or is it the uh the seascape that you're talking about there, cat? Personally, I'm just glad that Kat posts pictures because I am utterly pants at remembering to do so. I have an entire Patreon tier that promises blasé cat pictures, and I really need to chase my mother-in-law's cats around a little bit. <laughs> Although we were at the pet store, too. We, we have a uh, robin who made a nest on our porch light. And so, because the laws of hospitality dictate that you must be kind to your guests, uh, we went out to the pet store to pick up some freeze-dried uh, mealworms. And I think she has yet to try them, but if she's got eggs in that nest, there may come a time when she needs them, so... I'm kind of hoping that she'll give them a try. At any rate, um, while we were there, we saw kittens. There, there was a cat that was a year and a half old who was gorgeous. He, he was like a little furry creamsicle. Uh, it was an orange, orange tabby. And then there was a a group of three kittens that all had uh, Star Wars names. So I think there was a Cassian. Uh, a Corellia and an Anakin and it it was very hard to walk out of there without four cats I mean going from going from one cranky cat to zero cats to four cats would have been uh, probably disastrous as it was we were lucky we didn't walk out of there with fish or a lizard so. <laughs> It's just kind of hard to be short. The new one's kind of exploding all over the place and it just reached the point where I can't get all of it in one shot, holding the phone up as high as I can. Oh my goodness, cat! You know what you need? You need one of those extra tall selfie sticks. Um, the lights in this, the lights that I've currently using to illuminate me in the office here are technically they're, they're LED panels on selfie sticks. I, I think they're one of those newer pro products off of uh, off of the evil Amazonian Empire. I picked them up a couple of years back when I thought I was going to be doing a lot of streaming of uh, stuff on Twitch. And 
I'm just lucky that they actually work really well in here. Um, but they're just like a little LED panel that's... Yeah, they, they said it themselves in the documentation on a selfie stick. So maybe that's what you need to do is just grab, grab a selfie stick of some sort and uh, one of the telescoping kind. That might help. Good thing my husband's tall. Yes. Tall husbeasts are a good thing. But then again, short husbeasts are also a good thing. They are more compact. There's apparently a real... Uh, there are apparently quite a few people who are demanding that all men be tall, and as a result, short men are having some difficulties getting uh, significant others. So. But yes, I, I am descended from giants. My father was over... The husbeast is certain that my father is at least six foot five. My dad's like, no. <laughs> I topped out at 6'2". <laughs> to which the husband says, but I'm 6'2", and you're taller than me still, and my dad just sort of smirks and walks away. My brother is at least 6'5", six 6'4", foot six foot and 3 quarters, of which he will attest to. They fit well into the overhead compartment. Oof. Well, you know, if you're trying to sneak your spouse onto an international flight, I think they'll figure it out before you get them into the overhead compartment. Oh, and we're coming up towards the end of the fluff. Here's where we are. Personally, I think I think that if it wasn't for the fact that I'm just used to very tall guys and I come from a family with very tall guys, I probably would have been perfectly fine with a shorter husband. Because you know what? If need be, I can step on a stool and, you know, get things off the top shelf. And let's be honest, I'm actually pretty good at getting the jar open on my own, so... As long as the guy's willing to deal with spiders and uh, wasps. Good. You may be overrating the competency of airport security. Ouch. I'm just optimistic to think someone somewhere has tried it, gotten away with it, and tweeted about it. Oh, goodness. Okay, we are almost at the end of our evil cinnamon roll. I think that was how it was uh, described. Here's the last of the fluff. Okay, and in it goes. So there is our bit of fluff for this week. Uh, and yeah, I don't know whether you can see the, the shimmer, but there is quite the shimmer and shine on there. People have mailed themselves before. That does not sound healthy. Ah, so that's, that's a quarter of the fluff approximate. It's nice. Very sparkly. I 
am thinking that's where we will leave it for the week. And uh, we'll see if I am able to get back online next week. Maybe we'll do a little bit more spinning. If not, I'll try to continue to do a little bit more spinning either through the week or in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. I hope uh, if you're working that your jobs treat you well and that your family treats you well and that you get a little bit of time in to do a little bit of crafting of your own. Uh, listen to a little bit of soothing music and just relax. <laughs> Okay, night night folks. <laughs> <laughs>